Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, just want to make a short video. Um, there was a comment in one of my videos yesterday that requ uh, requested that I make a video uh, as to why I got into stacking, when I got into stacking, and what was my first piece. So let me give you a little bit of a history lesson about me before I tell you this. So I used to be really big into um, sports cards, um, football cards, baseball cards. And then after that, I got into memorabilia really, really big time um, autographs. Uh, going, standing in line, buying an autograph ticket, standing in line, getting baseball signed, football signed, picture signed. Um, anyway, there was one guy who I used to work with uh, a couple years ago, five, probably five years ago now, who said, that stuff is worthless. It's not worth anything. I said, sure it is. Go look at eBay. Go, go look at the sold listings. You know, people are buying them pretty close, if not what I paid for them. Um, and we were, at the time, we were really talking about, you know, like baseball cards, autographed baseball cards. Uh, and these baseball cards, mind you, back in the 90s, you could buy a pack of baseball cards or basketball cards for like a quarter. Um, but today to buy a pack of baseball cards or something like that, a lot of these cost you $25 and up for one single pack. Um, anyway, so to get back to the point of this video, um, so he's like, that, that stuff is worthless. I said, no, it's not worthless. Go look at eBay. Uh, but then what he said after that struck me. Um, he said, yeah, but if you go to a different country, if you go to Germany, if you go to France, if you go to, you know, if you go to anywhere, you know, in the UK or if you go um, anywhere else in the world and you have that baseball card or if you have that signed baseball and you want to sell it, who are you going to find? Who's going to purchase that from you? But if you have that Kennedy half, or if you have this prox this uh, prospector round, or maybe you have um, a little bit of gold in your pocket, like uh, like this here. This is a uh, one gram Canadian maple leaf. If you have that anywhere in the world, somebody somewhere will buy that from you. Maybe not somebody off the street, but you can walk into any, you know, coin shop or... So that really got me thinking. Uh, and this was probably about, like I said, five, six years ago. I can't remember the exact year or date. Um, but then I walked in, that's when I started thinking and I started looking up coin shops. And um, so this one coin shop I still go to this day, this one LCS I still go to to this day. I called them up. I said, hey, I've been thinking about getting into precious metals, um, silver. Um, and this was right around, I believe, you know what? This I think this was right around 2008, to tell you the truth. Um, right around when we were getting into the recession and all that. Um so I called them up. I said, hey, I want to get into some precious metals. What do you recommend? And they said, hey, well, you might want to come down. But they talked to me on the phone. No, no big deal. They said, if you're just starting out, what they recommend is buying bags of of uh, junk silver, 90% silver, constitutional silver, whatever you want to call it. That was their recommendation. Well, I didn't have that kind of money. I couldn't spend, you know... A thousand or more dollars on a bag of uh, and I think sp silver spot at that time was around ten dollars eleven dollars twelve dollars somewhere around there it wasn't too too bad it's not what it is today um, I don't think it's hit twelve dollars since then um, so I got into it I bought some uh, prospector rounds 
I bought some Engelhardt bars and I bought some uh, constitutional silver uh, held on to it for a little while needed some money I got rid of all of it um, really low I think it was still around twelve dollars thirteen dollars an ounce um, and then it wasn't until a couple years ago I think it was uh, 2000 the later part of 2015 going on to 2016 that I decided that I wanted to get back into it I was worried about the economy I was worried about my 401k so I just wanted to get something and at that time I was you know listening to YouTube watching a lot of YouTube videos um, that was when I was really watching Silver Slacker every single day um, and I had bought 100 ounces of one ounce bars of uh, Sunshine Mint. Um, I bought some more Inglehard bars, but that's how I really got into it. Um, I think I convinced myself back then that silver was going to go, you know, to a thousand dollars an ounce. It was going to make me rich, um, but today. Uh, we all get a little bit smarter. Um, I think most of us realize that silver is not going to really make you rich. Um, it may get back up to $30 an ounce, you know, again, at some point. Um, but silver is, uh, there's plenty of it out there. I mean, it's in forms of constitutional silver. Um, I mean, if you watch, you know, Salivate Metals uh, videos, you realize that there's plenty still to be found underground so it's not a it's silver is not rare it's definitely a beautiful metal um, it's definitely really a attractive shiny uh, piece of precious metals um, but I still like it I still love to I saw so I begin I began as a, a really hard stacker and progressed into a collector so I still buy metals to stack but I but I also within the last you know six months to a year ago I really became more of a collector um, as well as a stacker so that's pretty much how my story goes let me know what your story is if you want to put it in the comment section uh, feel free um, please uh, like comment and subscribe and um, if you have any other questions I'll be uh, more than happy to answer and uh, I'll talk to everybody on my next video thanks a lot everybody bye